Hey guys, I uh, just had to take a break from chopping down those trees to talk to you about some conservation of momentum and how it relates to Newton's third laws. So conservation of momentum is actually just a statement of Newton's third law. Newton's third law says that if A pushes on B, then B pushes on A at the same time with the same force in the opposite direction, right? It, if the only unbalanced forces acting uh, when they collide is A pushes B and B pushes A, then momentum is conserved. This is because A pushes B and B pushes A are internal forces, and the momentum is conserved if the only unbalanced forces are internal. To conserve momentum, all external forces must balance out. Here's a quick proof showing how conservation of momentum comes from Newton's third law. So we have two equal but opposite forces acting. Force on one is opposite of force on two. So we have negative m times a equals m times a. Remember that a is the change in velocity over the change in time. A is the change in velocity over the change in time. Change in velocity over change in time. We have mv equals mv squared by multiplying time on each side. And obviously for a collision, when two things collide, the time that a is pushing on B has to equal the time that B pushes on A. So both times are the same. That's why we're able to multiply time on each side. And we get M times delta V equals M times delta V. And then we have M times V1, V1F minus V1I, right? Final minus initial, that's what delta means. Final minus initial for velocity 2. Distribute the M's. Multiply M here, multiply M here, multiply M here, and multiply m here. And we get that line. We have a negative term on the left and a negative term on the right. Move both terms so that all terms become positive, And we get m1 v1f plus m2 v2 i equals m1 v1f plus m2 v2 f. And this is conservation of momentum. Types of collisions and examples. The types of collisions depend on energy transformations. All types of collisions conserve momentum. All types of collisions conserve momentum. All types of collisions conserve momentum. There are four times of collision. Explosion, elastic, inelastic, and perfectly inelastic. Momentum is conserved in all four types of collisions. The type of collision is not determined by whether momentum is conserved. The four types of collisions are determined by how the system's total kinetic energy changes as a result of the collision. An explosion means the system has more total kinetic energy after the collision than before the collision. Some energy change from potential energy to kinetic energy during the collision. An elastic type of collision means the system has the same amount of total kinetic energy after the collision as it had before. So that means in an elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved. An inelastic collision is, means the system has less total kinetic energy after the collision than it had before the collision. But the objects do not stick together. Some kinetic energy was lost to dissipated forms like heat and sound during the collision. So ela inelastic and finally perfectly inelastic. In a perfectly inelastic collision, the objects stick together as a result of the collision, which dissipates the most energy possible while still conserving momentum. So remember, in all four of these different types, momentum is conserved. But kinetic energy is not always conserved in a, in a collision because some of that kinetic energy leaves the system. It's still conserved if you think about uh, a larger system in, to include the environment or the air around, but that's usually not useful to us. Perfectly inelastic. Objects crash, stick together. An, inelast an elastic collision. Elastic. A way to remember this, the perfect one, the perfectly inelastic, is the sticky collision. Objects crash and stick together. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, misconception.
She says an elastic collision conserves momentum. In an inelastic collision, the system loses momentum. In an explosion, momentum is gained by the system. Momentum is conserved in all types of collisions. Elastic collisions keep the same kinetic energy. Inelastic collisions lose kinetic energy to other forms, and explosions gain kinetic energy from other forms. For an explosion, uh, whenever I'm imagining two objects starting together and then going outwards in separate directions, or three objects or ten objects or whatever, I always think about a firework. With a firework, you have this small little thing packed full of gunpowder and all this other stuff. You light the fuse. Fuse creates the uh, chemical reaction to start, and the firework goes up. As it goes up, it's all one piece, and then all of a sudden, it's not one piece. And then it's like ten, right? So it's going up, and it might get to the top, which means no speed. But then all of a sudden, <laughs> speed in all directions. It's gaining kinetic energy from different forms of energy. An elastic collision is one where the objects don't stick together. An inelastic collision is where the objects can stick together. Oops. Objects can have an inelastic collision and still not stick together. The type of collision depends on whether the system gains, loses, or keeps the same total kinetic energy. So, yes, perfectly inelastic collision, they're sticking together. In an elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved. In an inelastic collision, kinetic energy is not conserved. Is it actually perfectly inelastic? Well, never in the real world, but for our problems, we can still get a perfectly inelastic collision.